Every year, more than 200 million people are affected by drought, floods, cyclones, earthquakes, wildfires, and other disasters associated with natural hazards. Growing populations, environmental degradation, and global warming are making the impact worse, creating greater disasters and making the need to find better ways to protect people more urgent. In January 2005, a month after the Indian Ocean tsunami, 168 governments adopted a 10-year plan to make the world safer from future disasters. The Hyogo Framework for Action sets out ways to make nations and communities more resilient and better able to cope with such continuous setbacks to their development. Disaster reduction should be an integral part of everyday decision making. Choosing how we farm, where we build health centres, where we educate our children and how we plan our cities, each decision can either make us more vulnerable or more resilient. At the heart of the Hyogo Framework for Action is collaboration. Disasters affect everyone and are therefore everybody's business. Being warned in advance can mean the difference between life and death. In Cuba, a combination of national forecasting, media involvement and community participation make this developing island one of the best prepared countries in the Caribbean for the annual hurricane season. We didn't have any casualty with this strong hurricane. Everybody was well prepared. We uh, were making live broadcasts every hour from several days before the hurricane uh, came to Western Cuba. Whether it's a tropical storm, a volcanic eruption, a flood or an earthquake, assessing and monitoring risk can dramatically reduce the impacts and prevent loss of life and damage to property. Another way to help deal with disaster is through education. Simply being aware of potential danger can save lives. Before the Indian Ocean tsunami, 10-year-old British schoolgirl Tilly Smith was on holiday with her family on the beach in Thailand when she spotted the early warning signs in the water. Her family warned others and she saved many people simply by learning about tsunamis during a school geography lesson two weeks earlier. I remembered because I had been taught it in the geography lesson and it was the exact same froth and I'm quite proud of myself that I knew what was happening. Informal education can also play a crucial role. On the island of Simelu, off the coast of Sumatra, only seven people died in the tsunami out of a population of 83,000. In neighboring mainland Aceh, over 100,000 were killed. The people of Simelu have their own local knowledge of earthquakes, which they call SMOM, and each generation teaches the early warning signs to the next. Uh, Simelu pernah terjadi SMOM tahun 1907. So, ia dah sisi wan nenek moyang tame ita masare masakat Simelu, supaya orang ale linon sebel, we, we asin surui, maka dina humudung mek dulu. Sehingga pada waktu terjadi linon tanggal 26 Desember, apa lata lanjar mek dulu, sehingga singa meninggal dah telu dul. Nah, we. It wasn't just the people who escaped from the tsunami. Many animals also survived. Pada waktu ye, menurut cerita para uh, kepala desa, camat, uh, dan tokoh-tokoh masyarakat, ke bawah ya humudung siam ek dulu waktu lino ni ha. Uh, sehingga uh, waktu besang tsunami apa singa selamat. Tapi nga maru singa terjebak ba uh, kondisi karena arau sia laon, adu sampat sia selamat so ge singa maninga ma, matai kan. Nga singa akan-akan dulu selamat masari ye. Though only a few people died, the island sustained massive damage to buildings and property. New anti-seismic buildings are now being constructed using modern techniques that reduce the risk of earthquake damage. Ah, yeah. Kalau cakar ayam, tapak, dia memakai lahanan beban khusus untuk tapak itu aja. Tapi kalau cakar ayam ini, apa laba-laba, dia Keseluruhannya itu, itulah namanya fundasi. Dia untuk pendukungnya hanya tanah gitu. Tanahlah pendukung dia. Nah, tidak seperti fundasi biasa lah gitu. Nah. 
unsafe buildings and the lack of building codes often cause more loss of life than earthquakes themselves. In Baum in Iran, over 30,000 people were killed on the 26th of December 2003, a year to the day before the Indian Ocean tsunami. The houses killed the people, not earthquake actually. You know, we had a lot of traditional and uh, the old houses here. And you know, that's the, that was the problem. The houses killed the people. Throughout their history, the people of Japan have learned the importance of reducing risk, having been exposed to a string of disasters, such as the Great Kanto or the Great Hanshinawaji earthquake. Apart from introducing new anti-seismic building codes, they monitor and study the effects of earthquakes. And all the citizens of Kobe regularly take part in emergency drills so they'll know what to do when the next disaster strikes. In Cuba, similar rehearsals are taking place, and across the world, millions of people in the villages of India and Bangladesh are trying to reduce their vulnerability to cyclones. In many places, local people are taking the lead in protecting themselves. In Kenya's western division, communities suffering from drought have built a dam and planted trees to protect its catchment area. In some places, communities are now putting pressure on governments to play their part. After a civil society campaign, Indonesia has just formed groundbreaking new legislation to reduce disaster based on the Hyogo Framework for Action. One of the central ideas is cooperation between various levels of government, civil society and the private sector. This is clearly everybody's responsibility because if we look at it, government cannot do it alone. Uh, the private sector could only do that much and yet if we do it together, then we actually do, we make a difference. But what is needed there is a framework. We need to have a framework where everybody can do their little piece and make a big picture. Being better prepared and making conscious risk assessments before investing in development at all levels of society will make people more resilient to the next major event. But it also helps in daily life to cope with the many small and medium-sized disasters that occur over and over again in so many communities. Though you can't stop natural hazards, you can reduce their impacts by making people and their livelihoods less vulnerable. Sustainable development can help reduce the damage caused by the disasters of the future. The Hyogo Framework for Action provides concrete guidelines for reducing the effects of disaster over the next decade such as how to protect schools and hospitals and put in place early warning systems. If implemented, these measures will reduce the economic and social impact of disasters, including the number of people killed and affected every year by natural hazards. That's why it's important that governments implement these measures and do it quickly. <laughs>